Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and today is May 23rd. And we still don't have a trailer. We don't know what, like, enemy race is involved in the story. We don't know what the story is about. We technically know there's a dungeon. We don't know how, where, well, we know when. That's literally it, but we don't know anything else. We don't know much. Come up here to the Seasons tab, and the current season of The Risen literally ends tomorrow. So what I want to do is go over everything that we do know... And then tomorrow we can figure out what everything else that we don't know. So let's start with some of these TWABs that have been filling in some information from dungeon rotators, the date of the new dungeon, uh, iron banner changes. We've got some sandbox things. I'm not going full detail on this stuff because I've covered this in previous TWAB readings and discussions and streams and all of those things. So I'm just going to do a quick highlight for you guys to get an idea, get in your head what is coming tomorrow. Now, the one big speculation that everybody seems to have is that Solar 3.0 is likely the candidate for the subclass rework. Kevin Giannis has confirmed it's not both of them. So it's likely going to be Solar 3.0 due to previous information that we received. If it's Arc 3.0, it's going to shock a lot of people. So if you are looking to set up your character for day one, Solar maybe have a few Solar backup options in there if you're looking at that type of thing. So a lot of people think it is going to be Solar 3.0. Go to Ikora, probably pick up all of your new aspects. We don't have a raid, so I don't think we're going to be like getting four after the raid. So I guess we're just going to be getting them all. Maybe we get them from the dungeon, but I doubt it. But again, Solar 3.0, likely the start. Now let's see what other information they've told us throughout this season of what's coming next season. So the first thing we do actually know, and I'm going to go kind of in a reverse chronological order here, is the dungeon. We know it is going to be coming Friday, May 27th, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we know normal difficulty is going to be at 1550. So if you've played the season and you got your powerful grind done and you got up to 1550, you're good to go, literally. Like, you don't need to do anything else. We know Master Difficulty will be live on the same day. I'm guessing that's 1590. I don't know if they would push it to 1600 yet, but we'll set. we will see. Uh, if your gear is 1560, obviously you'll be a little more prepared for normal. So that's probably what I would recommend to start. And we also know there's going to be an exotic weapon and catalyst, not Gallahorn specifically, but like Gallahorn, you got the weapon. And you probably have to do some objective to get the catalyst as well. You guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the alert bell. You guys will see videos coming from me and how to get through the dungeon, how to get the exotic weapon and catalyst. All of that will be coming. So we know new dungeon on Friday, which means you get Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to play all the other stuff that we're going to be getting. So we don't know if that's going to be a new activity, new crafted weapons, new story beats, and all of those things. You got three days to enjoy. Friday, busy with the dungeon. We definitely will be. We also know Trials is going to be getting a new set of armor, but it's going to be on a little bit of a hiatus. So uh, Trials will not come back until June 10th. Uh, but when it does come back, you're going to have this armor. You're going to have the hunter monkey situation. Looks like the warlock's got a bird with feathers and the titan's definitely the ram, which is very fitting. But yeah, you won't have trials for a few weeks because of basically launch of the season on the 24th. And we actually already know Iron Banner is going to be taking the second week, which I'll get to in a minute. But trials will not return until June 10th. So if you're planning on that, that's what you're looking for. I'm going to be at GCX that weekend, so I'm going to miss the first trials. But for all of you guys, if you're home, then definitely take advantage of that. And speaking of Iron Banner, they did break down that Iron Banner is going to change quite a bit. So we've got a couple of things. They said the light level is no longer going to be a thing. So they basically, they wanted to lower the barrier of entry so more people can play. So there's no, so power level is disabled in Iron Banner. So if you got an old weapon in your vault, if you're a brand new player, everybody's going to be on the same power level for Iron Banner. They also said Rift is coming back. So we're getting Rift, which is going to be kind of grab the glowing ball in the middle, dunk it in your opponent's Rift and score enough points that way. It's not so much about kills. Iron Banner is going to have a rework um, similar to, you know, focusing engrams on all of those types of things. There's also the reputation changes they did. So the more pieces of Iron Banner gear or ornaments, thank God it's ornaments, believe me, um, you're going to be getting your reputation to go faster. Also, each one of the weekly challenges that you do will add on to that. So if you do a daily challenge for Iron Banner, which will be the week of June 2nd, which they cover here in a minute, um, do the first four daily challenges, you'll get a 100% bonus that will stack. If you're wearing all of the gear or ornaments, it's a max of five total pieces, whether it be weapons, armor, doesn't matter, just five pieces across your character. 
you will get all the bonuses and that's going to help you get your reputation. So you can see the rift rules. You can see spark spawns in the center of the map. Rift, each team has, has a rift. Carry the spark into your opponent's rift and you should defend yours. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then also you've got the Iron Banner boost. So how many challenges you've completed, how much gear equipped, and then also if you're wearing the emblem, which you'll just probably have to dig for that one, that's how you're going to get your reputation for Iron Banner as fast as possible. And the main reason to do that is you're going to be able to get a title. Iron Lord is going to be the new title. They say about 15 to 20 hours of work to unlock this one. Now the issue with Iron Banner is it's only going to be two weeks. Two weeks during Season 17 we get to see Iron Banner Rift. Now, somewhere on Twitter or Reddit, uh, I think one of the community managers replied, we might see Rift outside of Iron Banner, but I have not like dug that up to really confirm it, but I think I have heard it may be coming around. But right now, the new game mode Rift will be during Iron Banner on both of these weeks. Week 2, May 31st. Week 8, July, tw um, July 12th. You will be seeing Rift and Iron Banner as your activity. And what that means is, if Iron Banner is active, there is no Trials. If Iron Banner is active, there is no seasonal event as well. So both of those things will be basically taken up by mainly an Iron Banner week. Week 2 is early to start that, so I don't know if there's any seasonal implications to that, any story beats or anything related. That seems very early for an Iron Banner, but again, I think they're trying to get Rift in there to kind of mix it up a little bit quicker. Uh, but as they said, Rift is back. They kind of discovered, talk about some of the pieces of that. And we do have a new map, our first new map in Destiny 2 in... A thousand days or whatever it is it is called i could remember the name that would be good disjunction and definitely looks like kind of pyramid swamp themed combination uh, it's a bigger map one of the bigger ones they've made it's specifically designed for rift so you'll probably see this map a lot in iron banner i don't know if there are actually going to be other maps used for iron banner but this will probably be your main one you see mostly because it is designed as a bigger map for rift to give it a bit, a bit more of a challenge so iron banner two weeks Power level is disabled. You can earn a title from it. Uh, reputation is going to be earned faster with the gear that you wear. Uh, the ornaments and the emblem and all of that stuff going on. Also a new map and a rift as a brand new game mode. So Iron Banner going to be a big hype piece the two times it does come around. Hopefully you guys get to enjoy that. Also with regards to PvP, all scavenger mods are disabled next season. So if you go into PvP, you're going to want to use other mods than scavenger mods for special weapons and heavy, which I doubt anybody uses, but your special weapon scavenger mods, basically useless. They're all going to be pointless in PvP because they do not want the special ammo economy for people just to start running around with 12 bullets and a shotgun and just ruining everything. So if you are going into PvP at any point over the course of next season, Remember, scavengers, not doing much for you. This is actually a quick little area to sum up. Trace rifles are getting a 20% damage bonus against non-red bar enemies. So majors, champions, also theoretically bosses. And the machine guns for miners and majors are getting a 40% damage buff. They're going to hit hard, and that does include champions. And then against bosses, machine guns are going to hit 20% harder than they do right now. The only two weapons not, the only two machine guns not getting the 20% boss bonus are Grand Overture and Xenophage because they hit like a truck already. Does this suggest future anti-champion mods? No comment. So honestly, check what machine guns you've got. See if you've got a couple you want to use. Throw them on your characters that you're looking to use. Trace rifles could be good. Machine guns in the heavy slot though, honestly, I have a hunch those are going to be very, very good. So see what you've got. Throw a couple on your character. Be ready. Crafting has two main changes coming to it. You've got the ruinous, adroit, mutable, drown, and energetic elements basically leaving the game. They were kind of a temporary band-aid on a weird situation. Only thing you're going to have is neutral. The cap is 10,000. And then the other piece is if you want that gold border around your crafted weapons, you're going to have to pick one of the enhanced uh, perks, like the intrinsic perk, whether it be range, reload speed, that type of thing and two enhanced traits. If you have all three of those on a weapon, it will show as a gold border, so your, you know, so your brain can calm down and your OCD can chill out. But yeah, crafting getting two changes. We all also expect to get new craftable weapons. We don't know how many we're going to get. I know when they talked about craftables before, they said in season 16 which queen we're going to have the season 16 which queen weapons only. And then they said theoretically some newer and some older as time goes on. Obviously, we're going to be getting some weapons with Season 17. Some are going to come in the dungeon. Some are going to come from the seasonal activity. 
We may get some older craftable weapons as well. We will just have to wait and see because, again, we still know nothing. But we will be back to crafting a lot of those uh, frames again and leveling them up once again for Season 17 because we likely will have a bunch of new stuff to craft. So stay tuned and we'll see which one of those are available for crafting. Kind of excited to see what they are. So also in Season 17, we are getting a brand new ritual weapon. It is going to be a machine gun. We don't entirely know what it's going to be. Um, we just know it's a chain of command. It looks a lot like the swarm or at least the barrel type. So it could be one of the slower firing, heavy hitting ones, which is personally my preference because they hit harder and they tend to be a bit more controllable when you need them to be. So definitely be able to get that from whichever playlist you want to go for. We'll get a few new, uh, you'll get your ornaments from whatever playlist you get it from. Get a few new playlist weapons. Crucible gets a fusion rifle, Gambit a shotgun, which sure, that's fine. I'll be curious if it's any good. Vanguard, I am excited for a bow. I'm hoping it's maybe a solar bow because we need one. Uh, we'll just have to see what those are. Nightfall is going to get a couple more things in the rotation. Or is least. Uh, and then DFA hand cannon. These are both basically previous uh, things that have been sunset. And now they're going to be brought back in with origin traits and newer perk pools and random rolls and all of that type of stuff. Or is least is a pulse rifle. DFA, obviously, hand cannon. Um, be curious to see what the perk like options are for these two. Because they were theoretically both decent before. A lot of people wanted them, so I'm curious to see if they can still live up to what people wanted them to be before. Also, for Trials of Osiris, we're getting the Forgiveness Sidearm and the Burden of Guilt Fusion Rifle. So we'll be getting a couple new weapons in the Trials rotations when it comes through on weekends that are not Iron Banner. Remember, Iron Banner is here, Trials is not. Now, a couple of the massive changes with regards to the Sandbox, especially in Crucible, were related to the way Flinch works, the way that you can actually build into being you know, basically be able to sustain, sustain more flinch. Um, there's an entire TWAB article about that one. Um, if you want to look into that one, that is the massive, massive sandbox TWAB. It is from the 21st of April. And then you've got airborne gunplay being the other piece. So you've got airborne effectiveness, which is going to be a new stat on weapons. You won't be able to see the stat on your weapon in game. That's going to be coming in Season 18 when they do kind of an update with regards to the stats that we can see on our guns, hopefully with some other ones too. Uh, but things like Destiny Item Manager, D2 Gunsmith, stuff like that, you'll be able to check it out. But the idea is you've got flinch that you can build into certain weapons. If you have 100 stability on that weapon, will help you basically take more flinch. Resilience is going to be able to get you up to 10% if you're 100 on that stat. And then, of course, what unflinching can do with the unflinching armor mods and things of that nature. If you don't like being flinched on your weapon, look into this TWAB specifically, the one from April 21st, to figure out what you can do to spec into it, what your weapon is going to be capable of being spec'd into, and things that are going to be able to help that out. The other piece, as I said, is the airborne gunplay. Airborne effectiveness. The idea is they state, and one of these kind of says it perfectly, so with minimal investment, a character will have around the same in-air accuracy as Icarus-equipped weapons currently do but with noticeably lower aim assist. The idea is <clears throat> if you jump in the air in a PvP situation, typically is where this is going to matter most, if you are accurate, you typically will not be that penalized unless you have a very low airborne effectiveness stat of just like, you know, tanking it. And Stompies is one of the big ones that hunters are going to have to see how it feels if they need them or not. But the idea is the accuracy should be just about the same as being on it. Almost feel like a buff if you are able to hit your shots, but you're going to have noticeably lower aim assist unless you build into that airborne stat. And then you will have no airborne accuracy penalty and the same aim assist as you do. If you build into it, you can be very lethal. If you don't build into it and you jump in the air, unless you are dead on accurate, you're probably going to miss. Now they go through a bunch more on airborne effectiveness. They have certain exotics that are going to make a difference. Aim assist cones, accuracy cones. There's a whole bunch in here for details to go through. You know, you've got weapon types. You've got exotics that are going to give you intrinsic boost to aim, like uh, airborne effectiveness. But big things to remember is just the idea that you've got a whole lot of information here. If you're a player who likes to play in that airborne style, certain exotics like Stompies being a minus 50, Oath Keepers to Bows plus 40, Bow Tracers plus 20 to all. There's a whole bunch of information in here. Go in here, read through it. Then if you have questions, then you probably can go from there. But that's a good place to start just because Stompies especially 
they they're gonna take a little bit of a hit for airborne effectiveness um other things not really getting affected that much or almost getting a boost so if you are curious what your loadout's gonna be like dig in a little bit and you'll be able to figure it out a little better as for special weapons, snipers should feel a little snappier without snapshot sights, but I think they will be slightly slower if you have snapshot. But the idea is they want snipers to not always require snapshot sights, so they're trying to make them a little bit snappier, but you still will get a bonus if you have snapshot on there. As for shotguns and sled shotguns, they basically the range fall off starts and ends a little bit sooner, so they're going to be a little harder to kill farther out, so you're going to have to be a little closer. Same thing with fusion rifles. Uh, they change the damage fall off distance to be a little more uh, closer to you on both the beginning and end of that as well. So fusions will be a little less effective when it comes to getting those long, long range kills. They want to get them out of that 20 meter range a little bit before that is where they'd like to see them kind of max out. Rocket launchers as well are going to be giving a change on damage. Precision, which have the intrinsic tracking, are both getting minus 10% damage both to impact and detonation. The high impact, which is the highest blast radius, is going to have really no change. Your adaptive and your aggressive rocket launchers are going to be plus 10% damage. They already got a little bit of a distinction between them before. This is going to push them a little bit farther apart. So if you have adapt adaptive or aggressive rocket launchers, those are theoretically going to be the strongest because of that intrinsic 10% damage boost. If you do damage with a rocket launcher, that's gonna be the way that you wanna do them is with these two rocket launchers, the aggressive and the adaptive will hit the hardest. And again, if you have tracking on one of those by a trait, that's not gonna make it a precision 10 minus, but these can get perks on them that others can't. So again, it's a little bit of give and take, but your highest true damage probably gonna come from one of these unless you have like a magical perk combination on something else. You guys know me very well. There's a lot of exotic changes. Some actually feel like they could be good. Graviton lands could be fun. Arbalist, though, I did want to point this one out because I use it a lot for barrier champions. Now, it's still going to be effective. It's just going to be reduce the damage versus champions by 25%. It will still break the barriers on hit one hit, but the amount of damage you do, it's probably going to take like one or two more shots to truly kill that champion with your Arbalist. So that's going to kind of change the way you have to play depending on what your heavy is, whatever you're using, Arbalist is going to do a chunk less damage to champions. Hit a boss the same way? Yes. Hit a champion? 25% less. There are many other exotic changes in here. Skyburner's Oath is getting a bit of a change. Lawrence Driver is getting a bit of a change. It shouldn't be too terrible. Lay Monarch is going to be a little worse in PvP, a little better in PvE. Uh, we've got Xenophage going back to its original rate of fire. Huckleberry is getting a boost in zoom, so that'll feel a little better if you're fighting that way. Leviathan's Breath, the entire Catalyst is pretty much going to be reworked. Uh, I still don't know if it's going to be worthwhile, but it's going to be there. Fighting Lion's going to have a little boost to its damage by about 5%. Eyes of Tomorrow should be doing damage to bosses and champions by 30%. So if you are an Eyes of Tomorrow owner, you actually should get a decent amount out of that one now. Graviton Lance, as I said, the Catalyst is going to be granting Vorpal and Turnabout. So in theory, very cool potential stuff there. And the Vorpal is going to give it that 20% champion and boss damage bonus. Grand Overture, um, you're going to be able to do all missiles in one continuous burst if you want to. So if you get the 20, you'll be able to fire them all that way. All of the linear fusion rifles, Cold Heart, Prometheus Lens, Wave Splitter, they're already getting a 20% damage bonus just in general. Because when you take one of these against something else, you're going to against like a boss or a champion. They don't feel that strong. They are going to be stronger, and then they give a few tweaks to them basically working. But um, trace rifles, they are going to be good. That includes linear fusion rifles as well, or linear trace rifles as well. But the exotics, those are going to have some potential. Cold heart, especially that single target damage ramping up. And now sustained damage creates an ionic trace as well, giving you ability energy. Theoretically, fairly cool. So the exotics definitely got a lot stronger. Cold heart for, for that single target damage could be potent for sure. One of the other pieces that's kind of cool to reuse some of the older content that's still sitting in the game, but give it a little life. You've got dungeons and raids now getting a weekly rotation, um, and it's going to be a focus of what's going on. So basically, you've got each season, the newly released raid and dungeon will grant pinnacle rewards for all encounters, just as they do now. So in season 17, literally on Friday, the 27th, we're going to have a new dungeon. Each encounter is going to drop pinnacle rewards and, you know, the new weapons and all that stuff in there. Currently, Vow of the Disciple is also the newest raid. That is as is. In season 18, we're supposed to get a new raid. 
that is the point when Val of the Disciple would have a chance to go into the weekly rotation. And what that's going to do is you're going to, when you complete the dungeon or the raid, you're going to get a chance at a pinnacle reward. So you're going to have to finish the whole thing or people are going to be trading checkpoints. Be curious to see how that one goes. Uh, but the idea is each one is going to be focused and whatever the focused raid and focused dungeon are, the loot in there is not going to be like on a weekly lockout. You can go in there and farm as many times as you want to try and get the weapon or potentially armor, but I doubt it. Mostly the weapons that you'll be looking for and you can grind that thing as many times as you like. So if you got a group that wants to run a raid six times, you can get six times worth of raid loot. It's not going to be pinnacle but it's going to have a chance at all those weapons that drop in a raid. So if you are looking for some of those elusive raid weapons to drop, when it comes up in the rotator, that's going to be your time to jump into that playlist and play it as much as you can. The raid rotators are going to be kind of a nice thing to refresh. My issue with the raid rotators is, one, the armor still doesn't do that much for me. Generally, most people are going to go into these for the weapons, which is fine, but the armor if you get an armor drop, is still going to be just the same. It's the same stat pools. You've got perks that people mostly won't care about because they're not likely to go run a difficult raid with mods on or and none of that stuff's going to matter. So for me, it would be nice to see some of these older weapons maybe get like an origin trait, maybe, um, or potentially would be something along the lines of, I still want armor to have more value and maybe that's something we get in Lightfall, but that's just a gripe of mine. But generally, if you are looking for weapons from any of the raids that come through that rotator, you'll be available. You'll be able to farm them as much as you want within that week. Same thing as the dungeons. That's basically it. And the last thing to tell you is when are we actually going to get our information about season 17? It's tomorrow. They said, if you'd like to go dark, this should be one of the last bungee communications you read before Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Like if you just want to log in and play, you can do that. If you want to get a quick taste before launch, Tune in a bit earlier on Tuesday morning and keep an eye out for a countdown for our next trailer. And I'm going to be up early waiting to figure out when that is. So tomorrow, usually if they drop a trailer, say reset is 10 a.m., the trailer might drop at 7 a.m. Pacific time. About three hours before, let people digest a little bit, not too much, but also not like four o'clock in the morning. Let people get awake a little bit, depending on what time zone you're in. So my guess is going to be about 7 a.m. Pacific time. I could be wrong. Maybe it's a little closer, but I would start looking that early potentially. I wouldn't probably go much before that. Maybe one out, maybe maybe 6 a.m. max early. But I mean, I'll pro I'm going to be up at probably 8 o'clock in streaming. So if you want to find me on Twitch, hang out, see what happens. We'll break the trailer down frame by frame and all of that stuff. So stay tuned for those pieces. With regards to anything else for Season 17, as soon as we know it, I'm going to give it to you guys, whether it's the best way to upgrade the, you know, equivalency of the war table for season 17 or how to function in the new dungeon, how the new activity works. What are the best craftable weapons? What are the cool ones to go for? Stay tuned on the channel. A lot of information to come from me to you. So if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. As I said, lots of content coming for the new season. If you want to find me on Twitter for antics, news, updates, anything, Hit me over there at uh, twitter.com slash ubontis. Those of you who already support the channel by subbing, thank you. And those of you who are members or Patreon subs, thank you for that extra support. All of you are amazing, though, and I will see you tomorrow.